finally taking shape as we look at the tribute of light over what was once called Ground Zero. Now, over the course of the next hour, we will mark the 12th anniversary of the terrorist attacks that took the lives of nearly 3,000 innocent Americans. We'll also pause tonight to remember the four brave men who were brutally killed at the hands of terrorists in Benghazi exactly one year ago today. But first, we turn our attention to another issue of national security, that, of course, Syria. Last night, during a bizarre, very confusing speech, the commander-in-chief called on Congress to delay a vote on whether or not to attack the Assad regime. Now, why? Because he's now entertaining a Russian proposal that would require Damascus to place its chemical weapons under international control. It's too early to tell whether this offer will succeed. And any agreement must verify that the Assad regime keeps its commitments. But this initiative has the potential to remove the threat of chemical weapons without the use of force, particularly because Russia is one of Assad's strongest allies. All right, so in other words, it is now the policy of this administration to trust these two men, and we're all supposed to take their word on an issue as sensitive as chemical weapons. Now, sadly, this is the new and improved Obama doctrine, but while the so-called diplomatic solution is being considered, the president is still apparently weighing the military option. Unfortunately for him, he does not have the support of the American people, nor does he have the political capital to get the backing of Congress. But none of that is his fault. Nope. Guess whose fault it is? Take a guess. And I believe that America acts more effectively abroad when we stand together. This is especially true after a decade that put more and more war-making power in the hands of the president and more and more burdens on the shoulders of our troops while sidelining the people's representatives from the critical decisions about when we use force. Now, I know that after the terrible toll of Iraq and Afghanistan, the idea of any military action, no matter how limited, is not going to be popular. After all, I've spent four and a half years working to end wars, not to start them. You know, if the dog bite, if the bee stings, if you're feeling sad, just remember it's all George W. Bush's fault. And there's no question that this whole ordeal has been embarrassing for the White House and the country, but somehow, with a straight face, top Obama aides are actually trying to claim this was all their strategy from the very beginning. I kid you not. There is no question that the credible threat of U.S. military force brought us this diplomatic opening. Until two days ago, Syria did not even acknowledge that it possessed chemical weapons. Uh, we have seen more uh, cooperation and uh, helpful activity on this matter from the Russians in the last two days than we've seen in the last two years. So this was actually a political victory for Team Obama. That's a pretty tough sell, Mr. Carney. Joining me with reaction, the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Congressman Darrell Issa, Utah Congressman Jason Chaffetz is with us. Um, is that how you see it, Congressman Issa? No. Uh, obviously, the president knew he didn't have the votes on the Hill. He thought he might have had the support of the international body when he went to Sweden and on to uh, Russia. Uh, the time to make a deal with Putin, if he wanted to make a deal, was when Putin thought he had the votes. Uh, the reality is he took an, all, an olive branch from a man who is very untrustworthy when he didn't have the votes or the support of the American people. And, and candidly, look, I've met with Bashar Assad. I was in, on the delegation that first met with him when he was a brand new president. He is somebody who respects an existential threat to his regime and nothing else. All right. What do you, Congressman Chaffetz, your thoughts? Well, the president of the United States didn't come to Congress out of principle. He was politically being defeated. He didn't come to Congress when he wanted to bomb Libya and wanted to get rid of that dictator. So to bring that up in the speech, I thought was maybe a stretch, to say the least. And it also demonstrates if the Russians came to the table just in the last 48 or 36 hours, I guess they weren't paying attention to President Obama when he drew that red line out there and said, if you cross this line, if you now, start wait a minute, moving chemical that's weapons. That's your red line. That's, that's the world's red line. That's not his red line. Go to be fair I, I, here. Roll the tape. We all know that that's not true, and nobody took it seriously. That's the problem, is we need a leader. We need a president. We need a commander-in-chief that is respected around the world. We don't have that today. All right, but besides the contradictory statements on red lines and regime change, which was, you know, flipping, flopping, and flailing, I, I, I think a thing that on the one hand is sad, on the other hand is kind of funny, Congressman Issa, is when Kerry actually...